there's there's sort of belief based mental models sort of generally about life, about the, our experiences in the world, and the objects that we uh, you know take into account and enjoy. And then there's sort of the influence of of the story, and brands have an incredible ability to tell that story. And when the brand story is involved. Um, really, we're, we're very sensitive to sort of the hidden essence of the product. We're very sensitive to sort of the hidden essence of the object. Um, this is the great work of, of Paul Bloom, uh, who's now at the University of Toronto. He was formerly at Yale, uh, where he's shown that we're sort of very sensitive to the uh, sort of perceived soul of an object. So we've done these these great experiments with young children, where he'll have you know your you know your specific like sentimental teddy bear, and he'll tell them, hey, we have like a a replication machine and we'll put your you know your sentimental teddy bear in the replication machine and it'll be an exact replica atom for atom hair for hair uh you know detail for detail and you know which one do you want and like every child you know with no exception like picks the original sentimental one and what's the physical difference between the sentimental one and the non-sentimental one it's nothing, but the sentimental one, we perceive it as sort of having a soul, we perceive it as having this sort of deeper essence that uh, again, just like a human soul, uh, it sort of supersedes its sort of physical constituent parts. And in the same way, brands can really tell that story. Brands can really create this sort of deeper sense of, of meaning and essence about their products. It was this great, experiment uh, which was done called the significant object study. And what they did is they bought all of these like pretty everyday items off of uh, eBay, uh, this online marketplace. And uh, it was like a rubber ducky, a paper clip, uh, you know, a pencil, a pen. And then what they did is they hired a team of, of fiction writers and they assigned each fiction writer to one of these objects. And they're like, tell me a story a fictional story about this rubber ducky. How did it come to be? How was it used? You know, tell me a story about people using it. They told like a thousand page, a thousand word, uh, you know, story about each of these objects. And they put that in the description of the product and they put it back on eBay. And then they sort of looked at, all right, well, what we, we bought this rubber ducky for $3. Now that we created the story about it, how much is it going to go for now on this marketplace? And it was like, it went up like 300%. People were willing to pay like $300 for this rubber ducky that had this incredible story when they were able to pay $3 for it when it was just the product itself. And so brands are sort of incredible um, at, at sort of telling these stories and sort of infusing ordinary objects and ordinary products with a greater sense of sentimentality and a greater sense of meaning. What a beautiful example. What a be what beautiful examples to explain this, um, the, the difference a belief-based uh, mental model can make. Because yes, you know, it's it's half the times it's our own projection onto products that makes it meaningful, but then that's what human experience is about, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay.